Okay, folks, it's 6.30, excuse me, 6 o'clock on April 30th, um, 6 o'clock in the morning. We're just having our coffee, and um, a week ago today, excuse me, a week ago yesterday, a friend of mine committed suicide. Um, This isn't a new thing for me. Um, I've known a lot of young men and, and men that have killed themselves over the years, um, going all the way back to my elementary school days when I saw the very first person, uh, a guy at the end of our street hung himself. And I remember seeing into the garage and just seeing his silhouette swinging from the beams in there. And, um, One of the kids, if I remember right, maybe even one of the kids' parents called or something like that. I don't remember how how they found the guy. Maybe just driving by and saw him like we did. I don't recall. But he had killed himself, a young guy. Um, And that was the first time. And and over the years, it's been high school friends that have or former shipmates that have or... um, you know, friends that chose to go down the career path of uh, a first responder in some sort typically are the ones that have these issues or maybe they're a veteran that served for, you know, a lengthy amount of time. But it, it, it's, it's often a, a male and it, it's um, often from those ranks. Um. So he's a father of three. He um, was engaged to be married. Uh, just a really good guy, like one of those guys that like had always had something funny to say, but it never really was insulting. Like the only person he ever insulted was himself. Like he would make a joke about himself or something, but everyone else, he his jokes were very fair and, and clean and stuff. Um, yeah, real smart guy. I don't know the uh I don't know the schools and stuff he went to, but I do know he was uh he had gone to the Center of Excellence, which I I don't know what that's for or what that was about, but um it would be right in line with him being a pretty smart person, so um sorry, dog's got something I had to get rid of. <coughs> So, when I first saw the death notice, I was so flabbergasted and thrown back that I actually, I didn't see that it was a suicide. I kind of glazed through it real fast because I was just, like I said, I was so flabbergasted it was Jake um, that I missed the part about it being a suicide. And Julia came home and I told her about it and she was reading it and she said to me, you know, oh, and it was suicide? And I was like, what? It was suicide? And she said, yeah. And she read me the part and I just, my heart sank because um, I, I, and I don't mean this in a bad way. Nobody, I'm not blaming anyone, but Like, I, I, I had been trying to call Jake for years. He kind of ghosted off of Facebook and just just disappeared from everything except for really work and, and his kids. Um, and at one point I had reached out to him because he is always posting all this funny stuff. And I just said, you know, Jake, thanks for posting these funny memes all the time. They make me laugh. And some days that's all I can do, you know, is... is is, uh, you know, I'll laugh at your memes and I'll feel okay, you know, get me out of my slump or whatever. And, you know, in his message back, he he basically said the same thing, you know, that he's got it going rough and he, he these jokes make him feel a little bit better and da 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 And I really never thought much of it because you just don't think people are going to do something like that. 
and and certainly if you knew Jake, you wouldn't have thought he would have done it. At least in my opinion. Um. So for whatever reason, his last call that he went on was difficult on him for whatever reason. I don't know the details or anything. And from the brief information, the limited amount of information in the report, it just says that um, shortly after returning to the station, he committed suicide. So just sad news. And I think in this day and age, the people of the fire medics community and the EMS communities and stuff, they're really, really under a lot of pressure. Um, most of them are working with limited amount of resources. And by that, I mean people. Uh, so they're, they're working long shifts. They're going from call to call to call to call without breaks in between. Um, you know, you need time, and I'll say, you know, maybe people realize this, maybe they don't, but when the pager goes off, everything in you is telling you to go, 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 go. And it, it's not easy to shut that down, you know, you're... you're doing everything you can to keep yourself calm anyhow, but it, 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 it's, you know, you're getting amped up and it's tough to just let that settle down, you know. It, it would take me, if I had a call that happened in, at night, like say 9, 10 o'clock at night and we were on the scene to like midnight, 1 o'clock, I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. I'd be up all the way till the next day. I just was always replaying everything and, and not in a good way, but in a bad way, uh, You know, sometimes I'd be shaking so much with adrenaline that I'd have to stop and just calm down. You know, I'm, I'm a very wound up type of person. So, you know, you go on these calls and, and, and say it is something really bad. And, and you, you're busting your ass trying to solve the situation, whether it's a mental problem or, or a physical issue, trying to get someone out of a house or something like that, whatever and it doesn't work out, boy, is that a tough, tough crow to eat, man. It really is. I've had, on a couple occasions, questioned what I had done or didn't do. And, you know, you, it's it's tough to just let that stuff run off your back and, and, and say that, oh, it doesn't bother me, I'm fine. I, you know, every time you walk into someone's house, You just don't know what to expect. I mean, I've, for what it's worth, my cable career kind of provided me some insight to being in people's homes and stuff. So I, it wasn't as odd for me as it might be for someone. But most people's homes are an absolute mess. Um, they're lived in, you know, not filthy, but, you know, stuff laying around and they're, they're lived in. And... Um, You know, you, you're you going into these people's homes in the middle of the night and stuff, seeing them at their worst. It's just, uh, it becomes very complicated in the mind very fast. Um, you know, I always felt weird, like when we'd have an interior fire, a house fire or something, and like we would be just trousing through the house in all our gear and, and we're trashing stuff, like not on purpose, but in order to get up to the second story, for example, you know, a line's got to be dragged through and everyone's boots, it's snowing outside. So everyone's boots are wet and muddy and they're cracking all that stuff in. And it's just, it's sad, you know, to see it all happen. And, and for the average person, it's got to be pretty dramatic, too, just as much as it is for the firefighter or the EMS provider. But 
Jay came home from that call. It was too much. Not, I believe he went to the station. It happened at the station, I believe. And, um, and that was that. Uh, he will be missed. I know, I know how I felt when I saw him arrive on scene and I was, you know, waiting for another body, you know, I, I can't stress enough how many times you go on a call and all you're taking is yourself in a truck and hoping that someone from another department is going to be there. Um, and anytime something happened like that, EMS more than fire. But I remember multiple occasions being the first EMS team there and waiting on the advanced team and it, it being like Jake and, and Andrew. Andrew's another phenomenal young fire EMS provider, you know, and, and you'd see those two walk up and you, oh, thank Lord, man, we're going to be okay, you know. Um, you know, that's how I always felt when I saw him. He was, he was a hard charger, hard worker. Um, more than once I sat on the peak of a roof with him and watched him hack holes into, you know, the roof with a, with an ax and, um, he was a beast. So take, take a look at the, the folks in your life that, you know, maybe struggling in those, in those areas or, It, it it doesn't hurt and it shouldn't offend to ask your loved ones how they're doing, you know. But, because um, I think you'll regret it when something like this happens, you know. I know I've lost multiple friends over the years, like I said, Various situations, whether it's suicide, car crashes, killed in, in active duty, whatever. Um, and it never, ever gets easy. But suicides are particularly difficult because I just envision the person struggling and hurting so much to do something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's almost unimaginable, I think, for most people. But I'll include, I only have a few pictures that I, I swiped off other people's uh, Facebook posts and stuff. But I'll, I'll add that stuff at the end of the video here. And um, just so you could see what I mean. Like, you'll, you, you just, the dude's always got a smile on his face and you're just a goofy dude. But uh, thanks for hearing me out. I tried and tried and tried and like the, to make a video and it just was it was stupid it, it, I just wasn't working out but I, I, I couldn't let a friend like that go without saying something you know I would have rather been at the service and, and said something or, or, or said something to his kids or something but um I can't, so I can tell all you guys what he he was about, what a great guy he was. Um, and, you know, like I said, I hate that this is an example of what the first responder world is, is going through, but it is. They're overworked, underpaid, under-resourced, um, you know, my dad's company, when he was in the fire department, had over 100 people in it. I think they're down to like 12 or something silly, you know. And they're a huge uh, department. There's like six or seven companies in that department. Um, three stations. So it's it's a it's a epidemic, and it, it's just putting more work and more stress on the ones that are doing it, so, um, 
But we'll raise a glass of coffee to Jake today because I don't drink. And uh, we'll say uh, fair winds and following seas, Jake, till we see each other again, bud. And that's our goodbye. Thanks for being with me on this one, folks. Have a good day. Mm-hmm.